Hey everybody. I've had a few questions and I alluded to it in the last video on YouTube. But I've had a few questions on why we're doing what we're doing. And so I figured I'd get on here and explain it a little bit. So what we're doing is we're going in and we're putting some water control structures on old forgot about ponds in the timber. Um, a lot of them are just natural ponds. A lot of them were uh, an old railroad right away. Um, they were made to make that or um, they were just the right of way held the water there. Um, different different reasons. Some, some of them were put in it for drainage purposes back in the day before um, we had other options on draining fields, um, etc. But we're going in on these, putting water control structures in so we can get the water off. Some of them, it does us some good to go in there and, and, and plant millet. Some of it, we're wasting our time. I have some millet seed left over from last year, and that's why I am planting the millet now, basically, just to get rid of it. So, but on the majority of these ponds that we're doing this, we'll take the water off. Um, if we can run a disc through it, great. The millet does get established really well when we get the water off and it's muddy. You just broadcast it on there, it takes off. It's, it's fantastic. But even if we don't do that, there is a lot of good natural seeds in this Kansas soil. Now, in Kansas, because of Colorado and some other things, getting water rights can be a pain in the butt. And then you're also putting money into pumps and infrastructure like that. And as you can tell, we are, quote unquote, balling on a budget. So, I, doing some research, listening to guys that actually know what the hell they're talking about, done it for years, a lot of guys go in and um, mow or run a disc through their smart weed and other natural barnyard grasses and uh, wild millet and stuff like that. And... And then when they flood it, there's more food. We don't have water pumping rights on very many properties. So we're using runoff to fill up fill up these ponds. In that last video, I referred to Kansas being somewhat predictable. Kansas gets dry and drier, I guess, in June, July, and August. Because of evaporation, whether we're getting rain or not, it is in the 90s for four months in a row, you're gonna have considerable ev evaporation. If it's in the around 100 degrees and the humidity ends up getting somewhat low, the evaporation in Kansas, and I know this because I was a couple summer jobs as a park ranger in college, there is a considerable amount of evaporation, sometimes over an inch a day. That starts adding up pretty quick. So, plus you have animals drinking it, etc so that, that that all that stuff um all that stuff adds up so come august when the water's low and the smart weed is thriving now some of the timing on this i haven't quite figured out yet but i will research it we're gonna go in and we're gonna brush hog some stuff um weed eat some stuff knock it down what that will do is cause that what once was mostly vertical cover in our natural duck foods it will make that horizontal cover and it'll all be going different directions. So that will make more food underwater for the ducks when we do get a, a fall rain and all that runoff fills up those ponds, most of which we don't even have water control structures on. They're just drying up because of evaporation. And then it will, it will also provide more cover for bugs that the ducks like to get in there and eat and forage around. So, I've mentioned this before, all we're really trying to do is get ducks on our existing properties longer than they would be on those properties for originally. So we want to get more ducks to our property and hold them there longer. Some of these ponds we, we historically don't even hunt, um, especially don't guide a lot of guys on. They, they're more set up for a handful of people at a time or less which is why we are starting the duck wild duck club to hunt some of these properties um keep keep our ducks moving and uh just uh, provided another another side of, of income and um 
provide more opportunities for more hunters. So, long story short, we are trying to get more ducks on our properties and hold them there longer and manage them better. We did some of this last year and the year before. It's worked. We're going to try to continue making it work. And then stuff's going to snowball from there. And I'm not going to get into that because we got big plans and we can't show all our cards at once. So here is a, here's the poor boy's way of uh, improving some of our properties and you folks that have paid the price of admission to come see how this hard work pays off we look forward to seeing you this fall the lodge build starts next week thanks for tuning